In this video, we're going to talk about embedding a video into your Adobe Captivate project and having the ability to bookmark where the user is. Okay, let's get started here. So I got a message a few days ago from Kurt Millander. He said, I would like to find out what the various variables are for the media player in Captivate 8 or 9. I have numerous single frame Captivate files with video, but I'd like to add SCORM bookmarking. So if the user clicks pause on the, on the media, uh, it'll document the current video frame the uh, media player is paused at and use that as the SCORM bookmark and set the resume accordingly so if the user comes back to the video, which I want to mark as incomplete. And well, suffice it to say, what Kurt is looking for is uh, for the LMS, the learning management system that his project's going to reside on, to keep track of where the user is in the video. Now, I would suggest that if you had a short video, like one or two minutes, uh, you probably really don't need this. I don't think it's too much to ask a user uh, to, to watch a one or two minute video over again if they're returning to a course, let's say 24 hours later or 48 hours later. Um, but if it's a video like, let's say something that's 30 or 45 minutes or even an hour long, uh, you know, sure, it makes sense to be able to return to where you left off. And I think that's the, sh the long and the short of it. He also doesn't want the course to be uh, showing in the learning management system as complete until the user gets to the very last frame of the video. And I think I have a solution for him. I honestly don't know the variables. I don't know about getting behind the scenes and coding stuff to make the media player uh, do what I wanted to do. What I do, of course, is I always look at the path of least resistance. Uh, or the simplest solution, let's say, and and that's what I look for. Now, I typically use uh, multi-slide videos for a number of different reasons. So let me just uh, close this window here and show you what I had in mind. Now, my example is probably not an example that you would use in real life. I just have a, a three-minute video that was shot from uh, the back of a motorboat this summer. And... Uh, so rather than have the video reside on simply one slide, I'm actually going to have this video on four slides. And what we're going to do is so that we can see where we are, is I'm just going to put, um, let's put a, uh, a text caption somewhere on the first slide where that video is going to reside. In fact, I'll just put it in the upper right hand corner here. And I'm going to edit the text in there. Now, you wouldn't necessarily do this for a course, but you could do it for other reasons as well. In your properties panel, you'll see an icon for insert variable. Now we've done this before where we've inserted, you know, names and, and uh, scores and things like that. But in this case, actually, we're going to use a system variable. Uh, 50 is a good length for that. That's fine. And what we're just simply going to show is the current slide, which is the CP info current slide. And we're just going to pop that in. Make sure you use the, uh, the appropriate icon for this. Uh, simply typing in dollar sign, dollar sign, CP info current slide, dollar sign, dollar sign um, doesn't seem uh, to work. So. Uh, I would stick with that. I'm going to just uh, right align this just so that it's nice and tight with the edge there. And uh, it's black in color, but in case this ends up being, yeah, that's fine. We'll leave it like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to um, insert our media. Now I've prepared this in advance, uh, but you're going to want to convert it to a format that's appropriate for how you're publishing this course. So, for example, if you are publishing it for a Flash situation where you're using Adobe Flash Player to play your course, you're going to want to make sure that the video format is in something like uh, uh, Flash Video, FLV, for example. Um, if you're publishing for HTML, 
you're going to want to make that choice as well. So uh, typically that's MP4 format or H264 or something like this. Um, Adobe Captivate does come with a media encoder, so you can prepare your stuff in advance, but very often, I find not 100% of the time, but most cases, Captivate will convert it for you by using the media encoder. Um, but regardless, I've got this prepared, so I'm going to insert a video here. Now, there are two different choices here for you. Um, the event video, which I don't recommend. I've not really used it myself but I use the multi-slide synchronized video. The reason being, of course, is that I can add closed captioning to all my videos, and that way I can ensure that they're, they're good for accessibility purposes. So um, normally what I do is I select that video, maybe it's on my desktop in this case here. I leave the default of progressive download, that seems to work fine. I don't need a path for that. I'm going to show the video on the stage. Alternatively, you could show this on the table of contents. Now let me pause for a moment and discuss that. Imagine if you had a video of, let's say, an instructor providing a tutorial that spans across multiple slides. Well, as the user progresses through that course, they might appear on an overlay table of contents, maybe in the upper left-hand corner. And then, of course, they would see the full slide of content that you've prepared in the Adobe Captivate project. So that's a great alternative and a, and a great reason for using multi-slide synchronized video as well. But today, we're just going to put it on the stage. Now, normally what I do is um, I... I modify the slide duration to accommodate my video because for me, I'm, I'm usually showing a three or four minute video. I'm not showing a 30 minute video or 45 minute video uh, like Kurt might be doing. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually going to distribute this video across multiple slides uh, to demonstrate what you could do if you had a 30 minute video. So the idea here, and let me just give you a little bit more background before I go ahead and do this. Let's say the video is 30 minutes long. Now, if I created, um, let's say, six slides for that video to, to span across, each slide would be about five minutes long. So if I stopped on the third slide and exited the course, as a user taking that course, if I relaunch the course from my LMS, let's say tomorrow or the next day, it would show up within five minutes or so of where I left off in that video. So in effect, we're doing the bookmarking as well. But also we're taking care of another issue as well. If the user hasn't seen all six segments of the video, we are not going, when we publish this course, we can say, you know, completion is based on 100% slide views. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment as well. But the, the essence is, is that unless the person has watched all the segments of the video spread across all of these multiple slides, then, uh, then of course, it, uh, they won't complete, they won't show up as passing this course. So let's go ahead and distribute this. I can choose two, which is my current slide, and change that. I'm going to have it go all the way to slide five here. But you could change this if you wanted it to be only three of those slides or two of those slides. So let's click on OK. And this will import the video. Now, of course, in this case, the video is much larger than my stage. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I, I'm going to need to do. Um, in this case here, uh, let's let's just uh, let's resize it manually. You could go in and edit the video, uh, but this will work. And we'll just do it something like that. And you'll have to do it for each of the slides. It's not something that. Uh, and I'm holding down Shift, by the way, just so I don't I don't think I would distort my. But just as a precaution, I'm just going to keep that in check there and I'm just going to leave room for that slide counter there so we can see uh, this is just a fun video that was shot on the weekend in the summertime 
with some friends out on the boat. So that should be pretty good. You can, of course, put a little extra finesse. I'm going to make sure this, uh, this, um, the timing for this uh, variable shows up for the rest of the project as well. So I think we're pretty good to go here. Let's just test this out. So I created, of course, a introduction slide, and we can hit begin. So the key thing is, is that you're going to use your standard, uh, not the media controls, but the standard controls for your course. So I can press play, pause, and I can go and jump ahead to each of those slides. So in this case here, uh, if I want to jump ahead to where, you know, another location within the video, that's another benefit of segmenting this video up like that. Uh, but let's just let it play for now. So now I'm on slide four, slide five. And of course, the responsive design is working quite nicely. Now you'll notice that it jumped quite quickly through slide three, four, five, and so on. What you would want to do to correct that, of course, is uh, set up the timing for each of these to be approximately, in this case, I've got four slides, and it's about a three and a half minute video. So I would want each slide to be uh, a little less than, uh, let's say, about 45 seconds long so that you know it's evenly distributed across those videos but that's the long and the short of it and like i said when you're ready to publish this course what we're going to do is we're going to publish this for devices and we'll just call it um, test course for now and um, we're with uh, e-learning output you're going to choose um, options that are based on the percentage of the video viewed, or in this case, the percentage of the slides uh, viewed. So slide views and or quiz, we'll do slide views, and we'll say 100%, and there's no quiz, so that's all they need to do. And if they get to the end of the video, they are considered complete. However, they would be incomplete if they only got to slide four or slide three and so on. If you needed to make sure that they watch the last segment, you could always just add another slide at the end to uh, cover those folks that uh, might not finish the whole video to completion. Um, but that's basically the easy way that I think I would address Kurt's question. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was interesting, fun, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.